In Chinese, posthumous promotion is called it a zhui feng. This kind of promotion commonly existed in different dynasties. To better understand posthumous promotion, we shouldn't think human beings are organic machine. Once this machine stops working, is that in ancient China, people believed human beings had body and soul. After the body stopped working, their soul still could receive the message and items from the living people. After we accept this concept, we can talk about the posthumous promotion. In my opinion. The emperor posthumously promoted someone for below reasons. First, when some people were alive, for some reasons the emperor couldn't give them certain title. After those people passed away, the emperor could give them this title. For example, Tang Xuanzong was his father's third son. He was born by his father's consort. According to the inheritance rules, the throne should be passed to Xuanzong's older brother Li Xian. Because Li Xian was born by the empress, he was the Zhangzi. But Xuanzong made huge contributions in helping his father become the emperor. So Xuanzong was the most qualified heir. In this situation, Li Xian voluntarily mentioned Xuanzong should be promoted to the crown prince. So Li Xian and Xuanzong could keep their great brother's relationship. When Li Xian passed away, Xuanzong posthumously promoted him. To Rang Huangdi, the Emperor Rang, Li Xian's first wife, was posthumously promoted to the Empress Gong. The Empress Qingcheng was the consort of the Emperor Shenzhong. Her son inherited the throne, and became the Emperor Zhezhong. Because in Song Dynasty, the Empress and the consort. Were not allowed to become the emperor's daughter at the same time. When Zhezhong became the emperor, his father's empress became the emperor's daughter. Well, his biological mother only was promoted to the consort daughter. In 1102, the consort daughter passed away, and was posthumously promoted to the empress. Second, posthumous promotion could help people get better posthumous living conditions. For example, Qianlong's imperial noble consort Shu Jia was buried with Qianlong in Yuling. When Shu Jia was alive, her highest rank was noble consort. She was posthumously promoted. To the imperial noble consort, then she was allowed to be buried with Qianlong. In Qing Dynasty, when the emperors worshipped their ancestors, the emperor personally visited the emperor's tomb, and usually sent other people to worship the consort's tombs. Third, posthumous promotion. Could be used to correct some political mistakes. For example, Yue Fei was an excellent military leader living in the Southern Song Dynasty. The Emperor Gao Zhong's time, at that time, the Jin finished the Northern Song. Northern Song's last two emperors and almost all royal family members. Were kept by the Jin armies. Gao Zhong was too scared to continually fight with the Jin, and wanted to negotiate peace. But Yue Fei wanted to fight with the Jin, 
and saved the two empress and other royal family members. To achieve his goal, Gao Zhong put Yue Fei and his sons to death. Twenty-seven years later, the emperor Xiao Zhong gave Yue Fei a posthumous name, Wu Mu. In 1211, the emperor Ning Zhong posthumously Yue Fei to E Wang, the king of E. Fourth, the emperor posthumously promoted someone to give benefits to living people. For example, Qing Emperor Yong Zheng posthumously promoted Kangxi's consort Min to the imperial noble consort because Yong Zheng wanted to compensate his beloved half brother Yin Xiang. Qianlong posthumously promoted the imperial noble consort Ling to the empress because Qianlong wanted to give Jiaqing the status of Di Zi. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon.